In today's episode guys, the alleged prices of the AMD Ryzen 9000 Zen 5 desktop processors, well, they have leaked online. Like before, now I have an update with the top spec models will be presumably some $150 cheaper than their Zen 4 predecessors and they're expected on the shelves somewhere on the 31st of July. In the blue wonderland however, Intel faces a new challenge with their mobile CPUs that just joined the instability parade. Yes, brace yourselves tech enthusiasts because well, the Intel's 13 and 14 gen mobile CPUs are crashing left and right and it's not the same bug plaguing their desktop counterparts. Let's dive in head first into the silicon saga or drama and see what we come up with. In a world where processors are mightier than the sword, AMD is back at it again with their next Gen 5 or I should say Zen 5 based Ryzen 9000 series CPU. Prepare for this epic showdown as prices have leaked ahead of the 31st of July launch. You might go one day to Best Buy and you might see a Best Buy employee just uh, you know eyeing you from across the aisle. Psst, come here, I've got the latest scoop from the deep piles of Best Buy. Yes, surprisingly or not, the Ryzen 9 9950X is priced at $499 and the Ryzen 9 9900X is priced at $399 while the 9700X is priced at $299 and the 9600X is priced at $229. These beasts are already in stock, ready to dominate the market and at these prices, it's absolutely no wonder. If accurate, that means that the AMD Ryzen 9950X and the Ryzen 9 9900X will be a whopping $150 cheaper than their Zen 4 counterparts. Yes, that means you Ryzen 9 7950X and Ryzen 9 7900X. The Ryzen 7 9700X gets a $100 price cut and the Ryzen 5 9600X, you know, is just priced in under $70. But what's that? In the red corner we have weighing in at 16 cores and 32 threads, boosting up a whopping 5.7 gigahertz. It's the Ryzen 9 9950X. And in the blue corner now we have the Intel Core i9 4900K shaking its transistors. AMD claims that the Ryzen 7 9700X is just as fast as the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D in a hand-picked gaming of test of sorts. In Cinebench R23, the Ryzen 9 9950X trounches the Ryzen 9 4900K with unlocked power limits. Even the Ryzen 5 9600X trades blows with the 14 gen Raptor Lake flagship in Geekbench. But wait, there's actually even more. The Ryzen 9 9900X is definitely no slouch either with its 12 cores and 24 threads at 5.6 GHz. The Ryzen 7 9700X and the Ryzen 5 9600X are also ready to throw in punches in this Silicon Smackdown arena of sorts. Yes guys and all tech enthusiasts out there, for just $4.99 you're getting a monster that eats power hungry Intel chips for breakfast with better performance and lower temperatures. So it kind of makes it a no brainer for gamers and tech geeks alike when it comes to Intel flagship Core i9-4900K and also the Core i9-4900KS processors which are both more expensive, power hungry and also consistently run hotter and also of course it demands a higher end cooling solution and currently are also experiencing some instability issues. What's going on Intel? How can you want to be the dominant piece on the market when your stack just doesn't stack up? If these prices are anything but accurate, Intel's arrow leg runs the risk of being undercut obviously by the Zen 5. This also makes the non x 3 SKUs look more valuable compared to their x 3 counterparts, which are slated to arrive somewhere in October of this year alongside with the new X870 motherboards. Stay tuned guys as AMD continues to obviously flex its CPU muscles, leaving the competition in the dust. Will Intel strike back? Only time will tell I guess. But get ready anyway because in the meantime the 31st of July that's the date to mark in your calendars because that's the date when the Intel Ryzen 9000 series officially launches. May your frames be as high as the temperatures will be low. If that makes sense. I would like to shortly tell you guys that if you like my channel you can feel free to obviously subscribe, like and share because I do other things here on the channel like unbiased reviews of all the tech products that I buy with my own money so no strings attached from any of the manufacturers. I always be true and kind and fair to you guys. Let's carry on.
All right, moving on to Intel now. Well, let's imagine buying the Intel latest laptop only to find it crashing like a clumsy juggler at a circus. Yes, users are actually reporting widespread instability issues with their 13th gen and 14th gen mobile CPUs. Even a game developer, Alderon Games, found that their Raptor Lake CPUs were failing 100% of their time during certain tasks, prompting them obviously to switch to other game servers like AMD. Yeah, so no wonder Intel is not even dealing with what's happening with the Ryzen Zen 5 and the upcoming price release, because they have older issues on the table. Intel, in an attempt to be patching things up, rolled out several microcode updates and stricter power limits. They tried everything from fixing the ETVB bugs enforcing safety mechanism in the BIOS, but the crashes still persist. Even data center servers with the W680 chipset motherboards are experiencing these issues. But what's causing these crashes, you might ask? Well, Intel is saying that it is not the same issue affecting their desktop chips, and they blame a combination of software and hardware problems. However, the randomness of the crashes makes it hard to pinpoint down a single cause. Some chips are actually failing at specific tasks, while others are just, you know, overall unreliable. The biggest headache though is that even when operating below its official specs, the chips seem to be degrading over time, with Intel pointing fingers at the motherboard manufacturers claiming that their BIOS settings are actually disabling crucial thermal and power protections. But obviously, motherboard makers argue that Intel's aggressive power and thermal limits are to blame. Yes, it's a classic case of passing the buck around while the consumers are left just, you know, scratching their heads. So what can this mean for Intel? Well, the instability issues are causing concerns along and alongside consumers and developers alike. Intel needs to react fast to regain trust while, of course, AMD is just, you know, silently and quietly watching from the sidelines, potentially ready to capitalize on the issues with Intel. The tech world obviously awaits for a break from Intel and a way to get out of this mess. Hopefully Intel can fix it before everything just, you know, spirals out of control quite fast. Another nail in the coffin would be the report from Gamers Nexus indicating that a manufacturing defect may be to blame for the instability of the Raptor Lake processors. According to a tip sent to the YouTuber, Intel's fabrication process has a flaw that leads to its antioxidation coating being improperly applied, leading obviously to oxidation via the connections that overall it gets worsened over time. Implementing the Intel's default power profile doesn't seem to be fixing these crashes and instabilities. By reducing the peak boost uh, clock, the peak core multiplier by 200 to 300 megahertz, uh, this kind of tends to alleviate or delay the issues, as does disabling the e-cores. However, CPUs are still prone to more frequent crashes and are unlikely to see much improvement coming up next. But this doesn't mean that you just lose performance because, well, the CPU will still die, albeit at a later date. This seems to be a very hard pill to swallow for all of you guys out there who place their trust in Intel once again and don't seem to be getting a fix for this anytime soon. Or, you know, not one that you would like, because the obvious one would just be to throw out your Intel CPU, go on the AMD bandwagon, but that means buying a whole new motherboard, whole new processor, and in the end, who's gonna cover the costs? All right, guys, you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for choosing to watch another video. You know what to do. You can comment down below. I can't wait to see your comments. Tell me what you think about the Intel's mishaps and what do you expect, uh, you know, to get out of the AMD's launch. And basically, if you want to get a hold of me, you can also check out my Discord server. All the links are down below. See you guys in the next one. You're absolutely amazing and wonderful. Peace out.